Hey guys, welcome back to the Jalty Podcast. We are bringing you a new, a new episode. Starting you off with a day. <laughs> Shoot, I don't even know, bro. Starting off the day right. Lighting some tree bomb thing. About to catch our microphones on fire. This is the best way to start a podcast. Burn your fingers, burn your hands, burn ah, your mics. It burns so bad. <laughs> Nat doesn't know that Nat doesn't know that heat travels up, so when she's doing this, she's getting burned. No, I do oh my Christmas hat, babe. All right, so we missed last night's podcast because we were very, very busy, but we're back bringing it to you the next day, the very, very next day, bringing you a lot of holiday spirit. Christmas is around the corner. No, Christmas is here. Christmas is here. We got Santa Claus next to me. Christmas is here. We <laughs> have a candle lit on a tree stump that has some snow on it. Um, I didn't even know this existed. I guess like there was this like Target super far away from me that had it. And I was like, oh, don't even try to find it because I promise you, you're not going to find it. There was one and it was like hidden under everything. They, but They're trying to save it for later. Yeah, because <laughs> I've never seen it at another Target. But wow, it is officially Christmas. You can see Christmas tree is up. Like, you know, the, the fragrances to wash our hands are winter candy apple like we are in full yeah we got everywhere okay there is a christmas tree in our bedroom there is a christmas tree on the first floor there is a christmas tree by my coffee machine wow there's literally christmas trees everywhere and speaking about christmas trees when you bring in something else you got to take out another so i am selling nats olive trees on offer up i'm so i don't know i didn't tell you yet but you have three three olive trees and you know what i got the demographics of like people that buy them and bro we got these people buying them, these people buying them, like rich people, like offering, not even asking, what's your lowest offer? Like they're about to pay the price on something for. You put them on offer up? $235 and someone was like, I got you today. Yeah, because it's originally $500. <laughs> You're not getting a deal here, bud. No, I'm, I'm getting a deal. You're not getting a deal. You're losing now. <laughs> Babe, I'm not ready. Summer's going to come around and I'm going to want to buy another olive tree. And then I'm going to have to buy it full price again. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to go to your freaking stores that you go to. I'm a blog, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to this expensive store and you buy it. It's better for you in the long run. No, for your mental health. I did not consent to my olive trees and eucalyptus trees being sold. I am so mad at you right now. Okay, I'll tell you the price. One selling for $350, one selling for $235. And then I don't know. There might be another one. The other one's a janky one. It's not that expensive. Yeah, it was from um, Sam's Club. Yeah. And that one's like 90 bucks. That I think that's what I bought it for. <laughs> Maybe that's why no one's offered on that one. <laughs> they could tell the difference. That's crazy. Bro, I'm so mad. I'm going to want those when it comes to um, like summer again. But why is it sticky? <laughs> um, anyways, welcome. Welcome to the podcast, guys. It is November 10th, which marks... Halloween. No. <laughs> no, no. Which, which marks what? Well, What's sorry, tomorrow? tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow I will be officially nine or ten weeks. What? I'm on seven. Am no, I that babe, behind? I've been past seven. I think I'm ten weeks already. You are ten weeks. I might be nine. I don't freaking know, but Dude. it has been a long time. Pretty much. For me, it's been a long time. For you guys, it's very fresh. But I have gone through this journey for a long time now. And I, I would say I'm at the end of it. Well, we don't know. Because, like, there's there's a lot of ups and downs in this. And then you were at, like, you were chilling for a while. And then you had to sit down. Remember when you started sitting down and you got pains in your back? You know what the hardest part is now? Since Nat doesn't really feel the pain on her body when she's, like, sitting down, she's sleeping on her butt. Yeah. So, like, I'm up 24-7 in the middle of the night, like, I wake up and I see her on her butt and I'm tapping. Her. I'm like, hey, you have to wake up. Turn around real quick. Yeah, so that's that's what it is now. Uh, I don't feel it, so I am sleeping. On, well, I'm allowed to sit and lay and everything on my butt already, but I was holding off for a little longer. But now that the news are out, I there's so much there's so much to say. There's so much to conversate about. So this entire podcast is going to be about that. So if you do not like plastic surgery, feel free to exit out of this podcast and meet us next Thursday when we drop another one. Well, no, meet us the Thursday after that because next one will also be about the <laughs> surgery. But, um, yeah, so I got a BBL, which I fucking hate that word. And let me explain why. When you hear BBL, what do you think, babe? At the top of your head, BBL, what do you think? All right, BBL. I think of, like, super, super scrawny and then, like, thighs. Scrawny is not a nice word. Okay, like really, skinny? really, okay, really, really skinny, like compressed uh, hips and then like giant butt. That's what I think, like ab abnormally giant. Okay, let me tell you what I think. When I hear the word BBL, I think like 
a huge, huge, huge but the word kind of like correlates with. It's just so bad, right? Okay, well, that was what I didn't want. And if you guys have met someone who has a BBL that looks a little bit um, too big for their frame, like you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so that is the reason why I hate the word BBL because BBL is like, you know, the BBL girlies, that's, that's what, you know, it's referred to them. And like my biggest fear was looking like a BBL girly. Like I wanted to have a big butt and like a small um, waist, but I didn't want to look crazy. Okay. So now whenever I say BBL, it just comes off. So like somebody, I was live the other day and someone was like, do BBL stink? Like that's what people <laughs> think. Like you guys hold up. I need to take, I, no one's gonna take me fucking seriously. Hold up. Um, I feel like that's what people think. Do BBL stink? Like, where do you get that? Right? Because it just, BBLs has been linked as such a like ghetto, like over exaggerated, crazy mom who's 50 year old that's usually what it is mm -hmm. right okay so that is not what it is anymore and that also has a lot to do with the fact that surgery like the girls who first got bbls like back back in the day they look very different and the technique was so different back then than to what it is now and that is something that i learned because i went to so like i literally spoke to so many doctors because i wanted to be really educated on the subject like you guys know like whenever i go into something i need to know the ins and outs of it and then i need to make an educated decision so, and then I've also seen it firsthand with people around me that have gotten BBLs and I've seen everybody's experience and everybody has a different experience. Every doctor says different things. Everyone has a different technique and there's just so much that goes into it. And doing your research is so, 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 so important. So, um, we'll get into like what you were thinking because I feel like that's a whole thing that everyone wants to know. Like, what, you know, people always ask me like, what, what does Jake think now and stuff? So we'll get into that. Or do you, do you want to? When I first told you that I was going to get a BBL, what was your thoughts? When you first told me, I, I've answered this before, but I didn't, I didn't take you serious because you were, you were like scheduling appointments for the next month. It was like, I think one to two months after. Usually when you're scheduling a BBL appointment, you're like, hmm, this doctor's really, really good. He's going to have like months in advance, like booked months, months in advance. Mm -hmm. And he had an opening. I remember you telling me, you're like, nah, uh, Jake, look at this. Like, he's really good. Look at all the, the work like he's done. And then he has an appointment available for this date. Like. I, it was just too soon for me to even process. So I was like, um, yeah, go ahead, do it. I didn't really think she was going to do it. And then she sent like the deposit for us. <laughs> yeah, you wired the deposit. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shoot, this is for real. So now it was just like a waiting game for the date. And But I, what were you thinking? Like, did you think I was going to actually do it? Like, what, what were your thoughts? Well, you always told me that you weren't going to go get a crazy one. So like my mind wasn't like, oh, my gosh, is she going to look crazy? Is she going to look <laughs> overly big? Like, I didn't, I didn't mind however you looked, but were you going to be like one of those people that I would think of when I think of the word BBL? Yeah, what we were just talking about, yeah. And then you explained to me like, no, I don't want that. I just want something that gives me a little bit of uh, like, what is, what is it, like volume in your butt, I guess. In my, yeah, it was more of my hip dips. Like I, for a moment, I wasn't even going to touch my butt. I was like, mm, should I just like fill my hip dips and not touch my butt? Because there was a doctor that I was going to go to out here because the doctor that I went to is in Houston, right? And I didn't want to go to Houston because of the travel, which is just as bad as you can imagine, like, the travel, I don't think I'll ever go to another doctor that's out of state. Yeah, because if you have to see them for like a checkup or like a or anything, oh you have gosh. to travel. And it's so expensive it's and worst. time consuming. It's the worst. Like it's actually the worst thing in the world. And then it, it also depends where you're going. Like thankfully, Houston is a pretty big city. So um, when we wanted to do Ubers, there is Ubers and all that stuff. But I can't even imagine for people that travel somewhere, like, for example, people that go to other countries and there's not really like, I remember when we went to Mexico City, like, yeah, there was Ubers, but every time that I've gone to Mexico that isn't Mexico City, like when I've gone with my family and like Sinaloa and stuff, like there's no Ubers and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, because that's like more of the rural area, more uh, like it's closer to home for your family. Yeah, so I just, I, what I'm thinking is traveling for surgery. And if you're not going to a city that's super populated, you know, per se, you know, you don't even have transportation. It's a whole, 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 whole thing. And, you know, money aside, it sucks. And with the money included, it's like even worse. You have to pay for flights. You have to pay for a place to stay. You have to pay for the Ubers or rent a car. And then you have to pay for food. It, it's and a then, lot. And then you have to pay for massages. Well, no, that's part of the surgery, but I'm just saying for checkups. Oh, oh like, yeah, checkups. You yeah. have to go do all that. So, um, 
it, it's a lot so i was thinking of doing it with a doctor it was actually the doctor that did my boobs i was like should i just go to with him and i i really like the doctor that did my boobs i feel like he was always really involved with me and he was always like super kind of like checking on me type vibe and there was one time that we had gone with him that he was like in a really bad mood but you know people whatever like people have ba uh, bad they're bad days, so yeah, they're bad days and stuff but overall he was always like a pretty pretty good doctor with me and so um, when I had gone for my, I believe it was my eight month checkup for my boobs. I had asked him, I was like, do you think that I have enough, um, fat to do a fat transfer? He's like, oh yeah. He's like, I wouldn't even use all the fat you have. And I was like, okay. You're like, okay, <laughs> no, no, I want you to use all of it. And I'm like, okay. Like, don't, you know, I that much. So he was like, yeah, you, we can like basically do it and just fill your hip dips <laughs> because that's what I, did you barely get what I was trying to say? Oh, <laughs> he said, damn. Okay. I know that was like kind of mean, but I was thinking of just doing my hip dips at the time because I have a friend who just did her hip dips. Like, so what it is is that you literally don't touch your butt. It's just the holes. And like, I don't even know how to explain it, but you're able to sit on your butt, lay on your butt, like do all that because you technically didn't put it in your butt. So I was like, Ooh, like I'm going to do that. Cause I really don't mind the size of my butt. Truly. It's like, for me, it was more of my um, belly. I've always had belly fat in my stomach. Like my entire my whole family does. We just have, um, I think it's a Latino thing, but at the same time, I don't know. Cause I see some big booty Latinas and I'm like, what the hell? Like maybe I just got the wrong Latino jeans. I don't know what it is, but we've always had belly jeans. Like I remember even when I was at my skinniest, I've always had a belly and it's not a average belly. I used to think that it was part of my gut health because of the way that it pops out. It's not like, I'm, I'm sure there's things you could do to like prevent it from preventing the, what is it? The, when it like grows, like what's that called? What do you drink the poppies for? The bloating? The bloating. I think so, there's uh, something to do with the bloating. Yeah, but it's not bloating because it was actually fat. Like, now that I got my oh. surgery, I figured that it was fat. Yeah, because your your rib cage and everything, like, your ribs would stick out. Like, yeah. you were skinny, and then you just had, like, a little uh, like a little belly. It was huge. It was not a little belly. No, but when I first met you. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah I remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you first met me, I've always had a belly. Even though I was probably, like, when I met you, I was probably, like, 95 pounds. And I always had a belly. And, like, I never had any fat in my arms. I never had any fat, like, in my thighs. I never had any fat anywhere. It was always just in my belly. And in a very weird area in my belly, like, in this top portion. It's like a fat pocket up here. So... Yeah, so I was basically just like, I just want to remove it because it's so frustrating because whenever, like, I honestly feel like that also did trigger a lot of, like, my eating problems was because anytime I would gain any little bit of weight, it would all go to my stomach. Like, when I tell you all of it, and then people would always be like, oh, well, you need to, you know, you need to eat right in order for it not to go to your belly, but you cannot target where your fat is going to go. It doesn't work that way, which is what I learned later it's like yeah you can eat clean and stuff to not eat a lot of fat but that just means that you're not intaking fat it doesn't mean that you're you know eating lettuce and it's going to your ass it doesn't yeah. work that way <laughs> and I, I you know i truly did think it was that way because when you're you know people on the internet are just very uneducated and so they'll be like oh well you just need to stop eating this and then you're gonna get a fat ass and you're gonna lose all your belly and it's like it's not like that mm. if you lose weight you're gonna lose it everywhere if you gain weight you're gonna gain it does that make sense yeah Anyways, you know, cause you're like a gym, like you would do fitness and stuff, but like, I didn't know this. So yeah, I've always just had a belly. And when I started to gain more weight because just happy weight, it all went to my stomach and it was hard because I've always had a belly, but not to where it was at. And then I started getting all of the internet comments of like, she got so fat. She's pregnant. It's foul, bro. It's like so mean. People were literally so mean. And it's so funny because I bet you if I search up the name of those people, it's the same ones that were talking shit because I got surgery. So exactly. it, it just doesn't even make any sense. But yeah, like I, everyone, and I even like, I couldn't wear this shirt. It's actually so funny that I'm able to wear this shirt now because before this shirt would literally fit me like right under my bra because the fat would push it up. Like that's how, so all of my clothes just wasn't fitting me anymore. Like I couldn't wear anything because I just looked huge and I love the size of my butt. I went to the gym for a year straight. I feel like people forget this. I literally hired a personal trainer. I was doing the gym. I did all of that. And I loved my legs. I loved my butt. Like I truly had a lot of muscle. I felt so strong, but my belly was there. Like my butt grew so much because of muscle, but my belly was there. And I could like my, my core was so strong and I knew it was strong because you I could first, see the line still like at first I couldn't do like planks or anything. And then I got to be able to do like planks for like two minutes, three minutes. Like it just got better. So I knew I was getting stronger at the yeah. gym. 
but I couldn't shred that layer of fat. It was so infuriating. Like I remember wearing leggings to the gym and I could, I was always wearing the big shirts. You guys remember? You guys would be like, oh, that's Nat's daily. The little, oh, the, the Ford, the Ford <laughs> truck. It's because what I would do is I would tuck it in the back because I loved how my butt looked, but I would let it hang in the front because I literally hated it. Um, And I was like, okay, I, there was times where, Yes, I would vlog me going to the gym, but I'm like, this is getting so repetitive. Like, I don't want to have to vlog every single time I go to the gym. So then I would just go to the gym and then I wouldn't even vlog. And I was just like, oh, this is just taking up way too much time. I would have to do it every day. And then if I, you know, missed and I was starting to like not see the results and I'm like, okay, this is way too time consuming. So it, it just ended up, I was like, I'm just gonna get this. Early. Yeah. Every time you had the morning routine of you going to the gym, you would come back home at like 10 a.m. And that's like pretty much your morning. And that's it, yeah. And you would leave probably what, 7 a.m.? I would leave at 7 because I had my trainer at 8. Yeah, see. Yeah, it was just a lot of time. And I was like, this is not effective at all for what I'm trying to do with my career. Like, we have to film a lot. Like, we have so much stuff to do. And this is just not effective, right? So anyway, I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get lipo. Like I'm just doing it. So that's when I had asked the doctor and then he was like, yeah, we could totally do it. But the reason I didn't end up going with my boob doctor is because I found my current doctor. So I found him, um, like earlier in the year and I saw like one of his posts and it was everything I wanted because I had a very specific type of look that I was going for. It was very much like lower upside down heart i hate the shelf look i literally hate i hate it it looks so like on my body it would look so bad so i was like i don't want a shelf i want an upside down heart i don't want any top butt at all like that that was look what i was going for and i couldn't find a doctor that does that ever like i cannot find those doctors yeah there's some that special specialize in certain like things and like the doctor you found specializes in the upside down hearts yeah like that's what he does every girl looks like that so i was like oh man like this is perfect i would say that i was a pretty good case yeah you were right because i like my starting point was already pretty good like i had a really small rib cage and then i had um like with he lipoed me I already had like an upside down heart figure, if that makes any sense. So um, we have like the people that got denied that we know from him. They just didn't have, there's so many different reasons. I know he doesn't do revision cases. Like he's very picky with like who he takes, which honestly don't blame the dude. Because if you really think about it, if you're, if you take a case, I feel like that falls on you. Exactly. It like, does fall on you. Like if you have extra scar tissue somewhere and then he tries to remove it, but when that's not his specialty, like it's going to be falling on him because he couldn't remove yeah, it. Yeah, it does kind of fall. It, you know, at the end of the day, like if you see an ugly case, what are you going to do? You're going to say, who's your doctor? You know, and then it, and sometimes it's not the doctor. And that's what it comes down to is that sometimes your starting canvas is not going to give you what you want to achieve in one round at least. So yeah, he um he is very picky with who he takes, so you definitely have to like submit a console with him and stuff like that. And by the way, we're not getting paid to say this. No. We I paid for everything, like I, everything as in like a flight, the stay, you know, the massages, the Ubers, everything. the surgery, everything. I we'll get into pricing everything. later. We'll get into pricing later. Yeah, we'll talk about that um in a bit. Found found the surgeon, whatever, fell in love with him. I was like, all right, whatever. If I'm gonna do surgery, I'm literally gonna go all out, do it because I'm not. I'm not doing this again. Like, I don't want to have to go for round two. And if I go and with someone who isn't fully what I want and then I have regrets, I'm going to be so mad at myself. I was so scared. I was like, I'm not doing this. Like, I'd rather pay the extra money because the um, Jung charges like double with my boob guy was charging. So I was like, whatever. Like, if I, I'm going to go with someone, I just want to know. I want to for sure know that I'm going to look good, which, you know, nobody can guarantee you that, but whatever well it's it's 50 percent of the of the surgeon and then it's, it's 50 percent surgeon 50 percent post-op or something like that but i think you your beginning frame is a value in there too whatever it's like a whole thing that you guys well, have to, well when you get accepted it's 50 percent surgeon and 50 percent post-op yes so that's what i've heard i don't know how true that is but oh it is true 100 percent. i don't know if the 50 50 is true oh okay, that's okay. what i'm trying to say i think post-op might be a little higher oh 100 percent now that I know everything, I think post stop might be just a little tad bit higher, guys. And let me explain yeah, why. Yeah, let's explain. Go. Okay. I have always, my entire life, not my entire, but ever since I started knowing about 
plastic surgery have always seen girls with drains have always seen girls get their post-op massages one week after surgery and then um they'll go like once or twice a week i've always seen girls wear their fajas like they'll get one faja and then that's what they wear for the x amount of time but that's it when when i went into mine and i was literally slapped in the face when i found out that the moment i came out of the cutting board literally they put me in the car and they took me to a post-op center and they started massaging me like like literally an less than an hour after her her surgery she we had to transfer her to a uh massage place and no drains on her nothing like <laughs> after surgery she's getting touched massaged through like insane and i was like what the how is this real nothing could have prepared me Mm -mm. because i that's not what i've known like i know when gianna got her surgery like she had drain no 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 gianna had one open incision but she did have drains and um gianna didn't get her first massage till like seven days later and i know that when like our other friend got surgery she had her drains and she didn't get her massage till like a week later i actually think she waited a little longer but so that's what i've always seen well no babe i am i think i'm on my 40th massage now i got a massage every single day since the day of surgery to about three day three weeks post-op and then i um started doing it like every three three days a week no you did like every every other day for a while and then like every three days every three days and then right now i'm doing it like twice a week still Mm -hmm. yeah until this day i'm still doing massages twice a week and that's the reason why it's so so expensive because massages range between like 120 to like 250 dollars per massage per massage Okay, so it that's, is a lot of money. That's about what two thousand dollars a month, three thousand dollars a month. Is it approximately? Yeah, I don't depending even know. depending on how many I, you get. Out of sight, out of mind. I tried not to add it up because it's really a lot of money. But I, I, nothing could have prepared me for post op, right? Also, fajas. The moment I can like stick two fingers in my faja, I know that it's too loose. And guess what? Alteration. And then guess what? You have to go pay. You have to go pay to get it altered. And every place is different. And the place that we found in Texas was only like 20 bucks. But the places out here are like 60 bucks to alter it. And then people were messing up my fajas. There's this girl that literally cut right into the back of my faja and sewed it and like completely destroyed the faja. So then I had my mom like use her sewing machine and she alters it for me all the time now. But it is a lot, a lot, a lot. So... That was another thing. Like, I know when my friend got her surgery, you know, they they had her in one faja. It was called a stage one faja. And then she transferred over to, like, a stage two, maybe, afterward. But for me, it was like, I started, I did my first alteration on, like, day four. And from then, it's just been altering, 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 altering. Yeah, you were were shrinking really, really fast. Which is crazy because I think it was because it was tight. And a lot of people say, like, you don't want a faja that's too tight after surgery. But then some people say, if it's not too tight, then you're, you know, you're holding liquid. And so it's... This person tells you this and this person tells you this and there's so much information coming into your head. So at the end of the day, just just go with what your doctor says. Just listen to whatever your doctor's saying. I'm going to explain to you guys my whole journey because I want you to, you know, hear my POV. But just listen to what your doctor has to say. Yeah. So going more into like a timeline depth of the story, uh, Nat, after her post-op, she was constantly looking in the mirror, like at her results, thinking they'd be like this, which... Uh, to a, to an extent, they are completely different than what you look like before. But her body was so inflamed and everything because she had fluids in her body and stuff. So mm-hmm. she would be looking in the mirror at herself, and you could it's like bloated a little bit. So um, we we're watching the video right now that you guys were gonna watch, and it's just completely different than what she looks like right now. So maybe you guys are gonna be like, "You don't even look good. You don't even like." If it's not even the full results. No, yet. no, no. At the end, it's my full results. Oh, so I they're didn't... gonna see through the video. That's why I didn't post the wow. video. Wow. And then people were also bashing you, dude. For what? Because you weren't being public about this. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started because that makes me so mad. Because those same people, right, then go saying that I'm promoting plastic surgery. <laughs> but if I don't post it, guess what? She's hiding it. So I, <laughs> I'm just, you, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So there's nothing you could do. But I will say that I think I have the most loyal subscribers in the entire world because you guys ride so hard for me. Like They were backing you up like you guys crazy. Are, you guys always back me up. And I literally love you so much for that because... Like, why would I hide it? First of all, the only reason you guys knew that I had to be is because I wanted you to know. You think I just posted those outfit videos, you know, trying to hide my it's, body? It's a marketing strategy. Be so, so for real. She's hyping you guys up. She's giving you a little bit of the taste. Like, she could have been uh, hiding it until 
today. But Dude, I was posting my birthday vlogs while being cut up. <laughs> yeah. Y'all had no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I was hiding it really good. In but- the, if, if there was like any way you guys could tell is maybe through the podcast a couple weeks ago. And that's also why um, we missed like, what was it? It was a two? month of podcast. Oh, it was a month of podcast mm-hmm. is because Nat couldn't sit down and it's super, super hard uh, to even be like still for I an still hour with you. I still can't sit down. I'm still on a BBL pillow for like long, long periods of time. And then, and then your mom's video, you could see your BBL pillow on the side. There's like, it was really hard to hide it, but she let you guys see it to the point where like, all right, it's building up to the vi- the main video. Yeah. I started like letting you guys know that I had got surgery maybe like three weeks ago or like two and a half weeks ago, but I was already like healed. So when people were like, yeah, she's really trying to hide it. Like, I'm not trying to hide it. If I would have wanted to hide it, I would have like, you would have not known, babe. People can hide things from you so easily. Like it's crazy. I had like six videos pre-filmed. While I was just like recovering, literally, um, the day of surgery, I posted a vlog, and it was and y'all had no idea. It was super hard because our timeline was like maybe we could post a video on our couple's channel like while she after she has her surgery, and then the next video would be like before she had the surgery. Yeah. So one of the videos, what was it? Decorating for Halloween, or it was decorating for something. We were in the store. What was it for our couple's oh, channel? Oh, the the um, spooky one. Or oh what? yeah, so we did a spooky basket video, and that was post operation so she had her bbl and everything no spooky basket was before okay then what was the one right after when we went into the store and you could see her big butt oh my gosh yes it's the the cute date the cute okay date. so we did like doing a doing 100 dates whatever as many dates as we can i don't know what it was and that butt was like abnormally different than what it was yeah. in the, pri- the pr- previous video and then in the next video it was like previous or yeah. was it pre pre bbl so it was like hold up did she get one or not? But uh-huh. it was like hard posting the timeline. Yeah, it was definitely throwing people off for sure. But I think that at the end of the day, you guys, people who know me know that I will always talk about it. Like, I, I'm not going to hide anything. At the end of the day, you guys, um, you know, have been with me throughout my life. So I'm going to share it, whether people like it or not, or whether they want to unsubscribe. Like, why do you comment that? Just unsubscribe. Nobody cares. Like, if you don't like who I am as a person anymore, that's okay. And the way that my body looks should have nothing to do with the fact that who I am as a person. Like, if you like my content, my content is not revolving around my body at all. Like, I literally make coffee for a living. Like, <laughs> you guys, my, my body has nothing to do, so I don't understand why people link it. It's almost like because, you know, she looks better now, people don't want, don't like that. People never want to see you doing better. So that, that's just what it is. But it's okay. Um, anyways, moving forward, I went back to Texas because I was having complications. I got like two seromas, which is basically when fluid gets trapped under your belly because your incisions closed. And I was draining for about 15 days, which is crazy because when have you ever heard that from anyone? What's the normal amount of time it takes to drain? I always thought when they take your drains out, you're done draining, right? So drains usually get taken out within like a week or two weeks. But that's not the case, right? Dude, I was draining till I went back to Texas, which was week three. Dang. I mean, it's not just any draining. I was significant. That's why I got so many seromas because I was draining a lot. I had like, it was like a pool underneath my belly. And was it going through your incisions or was it going through your lymph nodes where you had to pee it out? Okay, well, that's another thing. So some people will say, oh, you're going to pee your seroma out, right? Okay, well, my post-op nurse in Houston, she's like, she's the only person I'll ever trust with any information. She's like, this very, girl, very educated. She deals with patients every day, probably for the past, I don't even know, five years and mi- she's minimum. Like a, she used to be like, a medical professional. So I, I really trust her. I feel like she's the one person who I can trust with everything when it comes to my post-op care. Right, dude. So everyone says, yeah, you're going to pee it out. She's like, no, you need to go get it drained out because if not, it's going to harden. Well, it hardened. So it, she's right. And like, ever since then, I'm like, I've never doubted this girl again because she's actually so real. Like everything she told me happened. Everything she told me. She, I remember her telling me, like, not to leave at the seven days. And I was like, no, no, I'm going to leave. And I left. Guess what? I had to come back on week three because I left. So it's just very important that you find people that are very knowledgeable about the subject. And, you know, BBLs or, you know, plastic surgery is not what it used to be anymore. Like, people's techniques are so much different. I met this girl who was doing a massage for me um, who got a BBL 20 years ago. Oh, damn. 20 years ago. She's like, yeah, like, back in my day, like, they wouldn't lipo you. Like, they lipoed you. Like basically saying that sh- they don't, they wouldn't take out the amount of fat that they take out now, which is for the record, my surgeon is the most aggressive surgeon. Like all of my, the girls who massage me post-op, they were all like 
They couldn't believe the was, degree of lipoing that he did to me. It's like when you're getting like a rib and, or no, no, when you're eating a hot wing and then you eat like, I eat a normal hot wing. I just like bite it, whatever, get the skin off or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's people that go down to the oh, bone. Oh, that will leave it like with. So that's yeah. what your surgeon did. He went down, yeah. not down to the bone, but like right there. Right damn near. And which, by the way, I'm really happy about because you're paying all that money. You better take all that fat out. But, you know, that means that it's more painful because they like with you so bad so it's so funny because i have gone to so many post-op people and every single person has told me that like my lipo was so aggressive and that every junk patient that comes is you know lipo so aggressively which again most people have an issue with not lipoing enough rather than lipoing too much so you kind that you know it's a good problem to have but at the same time i didn't want lipo belly let me explain a little bit about lipo belly that i didn't know this stuff so my surgeon basically told me that lipo belly sometimes happens because surgeons remove the certain layer of fat that leaves your belly looking natural which is crazy i i would have thought lipo belly was just like something that you get with every lipo well, no, because I don't think I have lipo belly. Okay, I have I, like an abs. I'm, I don't know what lipo belly is. What's lipo belly? It's like, you know, girls that have like uh, work done and their lipo looks like hard. Oh, so like when they bend down, like it doesn't even like fold or nothing. Well, no, that's like some type of fibrosis, but I, it looks hard. Like, I don't even know how to explain. You probably just don't look at girls like that. I would hope, but it looks like <laughs> I explain it thoroughly and it's like, yeah, that's what lipo belly is. No, it's is. just hard. It just looks like it's a certain way, like their belly button looks away. It looks like. Oh, it looks like sucked in. I don't know. It just looks you. You know, girls that know what lipo belly looks like, help me out in the comments. It it looks very unique. Yeah, let me know what lipo belly and is. So he was like, yeah, lipo belly happens because sometimes they'll remove. And another thing is, I didn't know this, but Texas has a higher percentage that they're actually able to lipo rather than California. So that's another you know factor that if you do you know surgery here in California versus in Texas. That's another thing. I got J plasma, which is skin tightening because I refuse to have any loose skin. I saw one of my friends have loose skin after surgery and it literally traumatized me because that's the worst thing that could happen. Like you get lipo, right? And then you don't have fat, but your skin makes it look like you have rolls still because it's loose skin. Like that sucks. Mm. That sucks so bad. I wonder if there's anything you could do with garments because I know her garment was not tight enough for her because she kept one size the whole time. Oh my. So who I was think her, who was her like surgeon that didn't even inform her about switching her garments. Oh yeah. But I don't know because his craft is very different. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if a different garment would have done anything anyway, but yeah, there's just so many different factors that I don't know what to narrow it down to. So I was like, Oh hell no. Like I am for sure doing skin tightening because I don't want that to happen. And a lot of people just thought that I was the smallest girl in the world. Like I had a huge, huge belly. Like he took out so much. He took out so much fat. Do you know, out do you know how many CCs it was exactly? I think it was like 3000. He didn't tell me, he did tell me the exact amount, but I don't remember how much he told me. And how much is like one CC? Well, for reference, I have 350 CCs in my boobs. You have 350 CC and he took out. Yeah, exactly. And he took out 3,000? I think it was 3,000. If I not, thought it, it was like, like 27. I thought it was like 1,400 or something. No, that's how much I think he put in each butt. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, he took out a lot of... That's what I'm saying. I feel like a lot of people thought that I was this tiny, like, oh, you don't need it. And it's like, well, nobody needs it. But I wanted to take all that fat out. Yeah, so it... But at the same time, at the same time, you were bulking. Like, you were literally eating as much as you can just so you can gain a certain amount of weight. In like he had he had enough weight to put. I wasn't your... bulking. I was just not watching what I eat. But that was that's, towards the last three that's, weeks. That's babe. a dirty bulk, babe. I only found out about my surgery like day exactly maybe like a month and a half before my surgery. That's not enough. Time I to told bulk you like that. guys, bro. She told me like a month before. <laughs> it's because I had a last minute opening, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get in right in time because I wanted to be healed for the holidays, which was perfect. I literally think that my surgery time was perfect. It was literally like the most perfect time ever. So. Yeah, there's just so much that goes into it, let's, and I don't think my belly looks like a lipo belly. Yeah, let's get a little bit more into your your surgery, like your surgery itself. Like, how how was it post op? Because they took her right from the uh, uh, the OR into into the car, right? How long how long from the OR? Like after you were done and you woke up, mm -hmm. was it uh, to go in the car? Okay, this was something very different from my boobs when i woke up from my boobs okay i woke up and the nurses were kind of trying to wake me up and they're like okay like we're gonna give you 30 more minutes to sleep and i remember waking up and i looked around and they kind of waited for me to like fully open my eyes and then they brought the wheelchair and she got me out and i was walking i was still like pretty high on anesthesia but i remember waking up and like they were very with my freaking this other surgery dude when i tell you i woke up to 
someone putting something on me. I can't even tell you what they were putting on me. Someone was putting something on me. My clothes? I think so. Something was being yanked and I was being yanked around. So something was happening. I woke up and then next thing I know, it's like, put your leg down, put your leg down. And I'm like getting on a wheelchair. Okay. I still like, and I remember just like saying, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I remember just saying that and that because it was the worst pain. Like literally it's like, have you guys seen those movies where, you know, the the creepy animals asleep and then it, boom, it opens its eyes and it's like, boom, like that's literally how it was. I opened my eyes and it was just pain dude it was so painful it was like i had like i had gotten ran over by a thousand semi trucks and then it was on fire and it was like oh it was so 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 bad there's nothing that could never prepare me for that i'm never giving birth dude i'm not giving birth because i can't even imagine what like women go through when they give birth because i think giving birth is probably way more painful than this i don't know i don't know either we should ask Gianna. she had both it's it's so crazy what? she's a trooper bro. yeah she's literally a trooper because that is insane i was like this is the worst pain ever and i kept telling him that i was in a lot of pain but i was so nauseous like that's another difference when i had got my boobs and i was not nauseous like i woke up and i was like pretty much fine when i woke up from the surgery i was so nauseous when i tell you nauseous i'm like i kept gagging so they gave me a little barf bag which no i don't even think they gave me a barf bag who gave me a barf bag was the people at the um at innovative yeah they gave me, they the barf bag. gave me a barf bag but i was so i wanted to throw up so bad so when i told the girl that was like yanking and pulling me around i think she might have been putting my pajamas on i don't know what it was but i told her i was like i'm in so much pain and then she was like are you nauseous and i was like yes i'm so nauseous and she gave me something for nausea and I think whatever she gave me for the nausea, I don't know if I couldn't combine it with my pain me- like meds or what. But basically, because I took something else, I couldn't take my pain meds. So I was in for a good one for my massage. And I was in so much pain. I remember I literally saw the footage of me coming out just like, and it wasn't that I was tired or sleepy or drowsy. I was in pain where I was like, God, take me now, please. Like, I just wanted to be taken out of my misery. I was at that point where it was like, I cannot do this for one more second, please. I'm just done. And you like when you're so strange. And she was trying to make you go in the car by yourself. But when we would try to help you, any part of your body that we would touch, you would be crying. Oh, like, yeah. Anything hurt. Yeah. We couldn't even help you. So you would have to get in by yourself, lay down. And any little bump in the road was like, like a boom. And she would be like, oh, and I was like. Uh, I felt so bad like for you, dude. It was so bad. <laughs> this giving me PTSD. Not even go through it, dude. It was so bad. It was like so bad. Nothing in the world could have prepared me. That's why I'm telling you guys. I know you want the little belly. Just go in it with the mindset that it's gonna hurt like a bitch. Go into it with that because if at least if you go with my doctor, I don't know about other doctors, but at least if you go with mine. Every single girl I met post-op was pretty much half dead. So I, be ready. I heard the main, like the main source of like the the pain is coming from your J plasma and the skin tightening. Is that true? Because because don't don't girls like get J plasma get, and skin tightening are the same thing. Okay, so that thing. Abetching. Abetching, yeah. Yeah, that's what they told me too. Because I I think abetching is the internal pain where it's like not even on the surface, but it's inside your. It was all internal, yeah. Was it? It was all internal. So was, if you didn't get any of those, do you think it would have uh, been more painful? I mean, I don't or know, less painful? Because he really he lied with me so much to the point where I think that it was just how aggressive he was. Mm. Um, because he took out everything, I think that that was a huge factor as to like why it hurts so 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 bad. Which now that I'm here, I'm very thankful that he did lipo me a lot well, because I would have been real mad. Your back wasn't as painful as it was. In the, I mean, uh, what is it like as sensitive as it as no, the front was? See, so I think it's because since he was doing the ab etching, I think ab etching is when they carve them out, right? So that's like yeah. super aggressive, like life literally carving you. Like where he was playing like a game with my abs, like trying to get the little square. So I think that was probably like, and then my sides were really bad too. But I think that my sides hurt really bad, maybe because he really lied with me there, like really, really lied with me to try to get me like nice and hourglass. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. So that could have you know been something yeah it was it was really really intense and that first massage i could cry thinking about it that's how bad it was dude it was like a raw incision and then oh another thing is like your incision so they're like holes right like you have open holes in your in your body so when she massages them she has to kind of like not pass over the hole but like kind of get there so like if you have a hole right and she's massaging down to it she'll pass the hole a little bit and put pressure to like squeeze it out so the liquid goes like, out of the hole it's like burning it's like if you had a 
you know, a hole in your body and then you're like pushing at it. It was, wow. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the worst thing in the world. And you had one, two, three, four, I had five. five. You had five holes on your body. No, I had two in each arm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight, nine, two under my butt cheeks. Nine holes. What mm. the heck, dude? Mm -hmm. That was that's insane. I would have never been able to do that. Yeah, you would. No, heck no. <laughs> it was pretty bad, but it was all worth it. Now I'm like, okay, it was worth it, but it was a lot of pain and it, it was I don't think that I I have never seen a uh BBL vlog the way that I kind of posted well, mine. So that's another thing. Even even the the massage girl was like, Are you gonna tell the truth about what's what goes on? Because a lot of people sugarcoat it and say like their thing went like a little more smooth than it went for them. Which and makes sense as to why they do that, dude. Because if everyone were to post what I posted. Nobody would get them. No one would get BBLs. Yeah, I feel like. <laughs> it's going to scare the living shit out of everybody. Because mm -hmm. I feel like people go into it not knowing what they're getting themselves into. Well, you didn't at all. I had no clue. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. That's so. Um, and I feel like a big, a big, uh, big part of your video is going to be. Like the the documentary of it, with a little storytelling um underneath whatever, but it's just like it shows the true stuff that goes on in the BBL process, and um I'm happy that you're you're like that type of person like not to hide anything. Yeah, that goes when on I was process. watching that video, I was like, oh, do I really want to post this? Because it's literally just me crying the whole time, you know. But I'm like, no, people need to see this. People need to see this, and it's my job to show people this because. If you don't do it, nobody will. Yeah, because I didn't I didn't know. And that's what really upsets me. It's that I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And a lot of people don't. And, you know, I hope that whenever people search up like BBL vlogs, my vlog's the first one. And that's the only one they watch. Because when you watch other people who had an easier experience, it's going to kind of like influence you in a way. Because you think it's a lot easier, and you'd be like, "Oh, well, now it was a one-time case." But it's that's not the thing. Like you also, every single person that I've met that went to my surgeon goes through hell. Yeah, you also had us with you, so we would always constantly pick up the camera whenever you're in pain, rather than like maybe someone else had just like one person or whatever. They're just tending to that to that patient. Yeah, I agree. Because you're not gonna want to vlog when you're yeah, in pain. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, it was a lot. It was over 16 hours of raw footage. Mm -hmm. So we recorded within the week that we were there 16 hours. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep, that's insane. Dude, uh, and then now that now that you're pretty much on the end of the stick, do you like your progress? Do you like mm -hmm. your 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 body now? How how do you think? Like what do you feel? Okay, so I got a dent in my butt, which is the I think the saddest part about my whole surgery. And I got this dent because so my surgeon has his own like bajas, but they're just so uncomfortable. They're so like they rip into your arms and it like Every time you get them altered, because the way that they normally come, they don't hurt, right? But when they alter them, they have to pull from the sides, which makes the, the, this stringy part jab into you. So if you see, like, a pad in on her armrest, I mean, on her arm strap in the video, it's because it was very, like, it was digging into her skin a lot. And you got to remember that I have holes here. So when that thing, it literally destroys you. So, you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't keep wearing Asfajas because I was literally being ripped to shreds. So at week two, I bought, no, week three. At week three, I bought another Faja. And this faha did not fit my butt the way it should have. And what I mean by that is that it was cutting into my butt, if that makes any sense. So this is like, this is her, I don't know how to explain. Give me something circular. Okay, this is her butt cheek. And the faha lines up like right under it, mm -hmm. right here. Instead of lining up on her whole entire butt cheek. Mm -hmm. So right here, it's like leaving an indent. And in it the, got worse. In the, in the process of like it healing, her butt healing that stays there it's like it becomes like a little permanent mark and i guess like the fat grows in both parts right mm -hmm. yeah so that's what's happening with her right now that's the it already happened my butt settled already so i'll forever have that dent and just sucks because you know it wasn't the girl's fault but she just sh she kind of should have known better like the girl who was fitting me because she should have known I was three weeks post-op and she looked at my butt. She's like, oh, it's fine. It's not putting too much pressure. But it's like, no, it cannot put any. It's not too much. It's, it's You can't put any pressure. And so it, it just wasn't going to the bottom. And because they didn't have another size and she was trying to get me to, you know, purchase the Faha, I, I, it just. So learn from me. Make sure that it fits you. And I'm not talking about like the, it, it, it's just, it wouldn't fit me as in. The butt cheek wasn't long enough. The faja was like a little shorter. It should have been longer this way. 
So you need to be really careful with that. And you need to make sure that you, you know, get one that fits. Cali Curves gave me a few and theirs are the most comfortable Fajas that I've ever owned. Like, I'm so sad that I outgrew those Fajas already because um, they gave them to me maybe like four weeks ago mm-hmm. and I outgrew them already. But those were the most comfortable Fajas ever. Like, if there was a Faja that was comfortable, it was Cali Curves Faja. And it was giving you good compression? Yes. That Remember? Because I was struggling because I wasn't getting compression. And then they gave me some at Cali Curves. And I was like, oh, my gosh, so much freaking better. So you need to make sure that you find a good Faja. Another thing that we missed, your rib pain. Oh, my. So Nat was having so much compression. To, I don't know which Faja it was or even if it was a Faja that it was literally shifting her rib. I don't know mm-hmm. how, that's how she explained it to me. Like, it was digging yeah. into her. So, like, if she would move a little bit one way, it would when dig would into breathe. her skin or something. Like When, when would I breathe, would take a breath, like, it was like I was getting a stabbing pain in my rib. And I don't think that was healthy. So, we couldn't even, we didn't ask the doctor. We didn't ask anyone. But we just, like, dealt with it for a couple of weeks. It was the worst thing in the world. I couldn't sleep. I would wake up in the middle of the night. And she had to take it off for and, like, rest for a little while. I had to unhook the top three ones from up here. So, it could give my rib some, some space because I was in so much pain. But if I was wearing a faja that was any looser, I would bloat so bad because it wasn't tight enough. So you just don't win. You got to pick an issue. You're either being stabbed to death from rib pain or you're just not going to get tiny. Um, dude, it is the most emotional roller coaster in the entire world. I bet, dude. Like, I'm, I'm over here having to wake up to help you. But imagine being, like, in pain and waking up and not being able to go back to sleep and stuff. And even in the mid, like, after the, the post- post-operation like right after she would have to take pills like in the middle of the night every like six hours and stuff and she was crying like she still had two hours left before she had to take them and she was in so much pain and like i had to tell her like we have to wait two hours because if if you take this like um not according to like the plan then you can get addicted to like the what is it called the medicine that the drugs that they give you yeah but i literally the only thing your brain is just getting rid of this pain because it's so 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 because that is the easiest way i just take the take the medicine and you'll be painless for a little bit longer yeah it was i didn't finish actually my narcotics because i think at day like six i stopped taking them only i was only taking them for after uh an hour before my massages but it was really 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 that's a big thing too so take take what is it it's your (laughs) your painkillers right an hour before your massage and then like 45 minutes before your massage, put the the creamer stuff. What is it? The spray? Yeah, so it's a lidocaine spray. And you can purchase that, like, honestly, anywhere. I know that I purchased it there in office with my um, spa people. They probably have some for you guys to buy. Yeah, and then it's a cream. and it, it, They're lidocaine creams. I know Aleve, that brand, has some. I mean, they sell them, like, at CVS and stuff. And you spray that on. I had, like, an orange one, but then I had to leave afterward. And, yeah, all kinds of sprays. But you spray that on your body. And then... Do it like 30 minutes before and it, it helps numb. It really does. What well, anything helps at that point. Like literally I had Tiger Bomb. Tiger Bomb didn't work. So don't even buy it. A lot of people uh, also recommended like the Arnica tea for what was it for inflammation? We didn't really take Arnica tea. I didn't really drink Arnica tea. And another thing is because when I had gone to go get a massage one time, um, one of the girls had told me that Arnica tea wasn't good for me so easy. So soon after post-op. And I'm like, girl, like everyone. So over here, they're telling me like. You know, drink Arnica tea over here. No, not yet. And then over there, they're like, what do you do? You have to take Arnica tea. Like, I was hearing all kinds of opinions. And I, I'm so glad that I didn't tell the internet that I had just got to. Can you imagine? Okay? Everyone would have been telling you what's right and what's wrong. Not even just that, Jake. But can you imagine the backlash that I've been getting the past two weeks would have been moved to when I'm freshly post up? When I'm, like, locked up in a room, all I could do is be on my phone. Dude. I, I'm so thankful that I hit it. And if I could go back, I would have hit it all over again. Why? And I don't know. I just feel like people have too much time to make stuff about you, to create things about you. Don't you agree? Oh, I have a whole thing to say on that, but I'm not going to because that's feeding into it. But I feel really, really bad. I actually um only told like very few people. Like I think the only people that knew were truly maybe like 10 people around us and that's it. Yeah. Like nobody knew. Like no, no, nobody knew. I I truly didn't tell anybody. Like the only people I told was people that I had to tell, kind of like my gym trainer, my last check, like, the, you know, people that I had to really, really tell. But I told my parents like a week before because I didn't want them to stress about it too much. So I was like, I'm going to tell them a week before so that they don't have a long. Because if I would have told them like a month before, they would have been thinking about it for that whole month. And it doesn't matter. Like I was still going to do it. But they're always super supportive. Like my parents are so supportive of everything that I do now. Like, 
anything. They're just so, because they know, like, I got a plan, you know, like they're so supportive. Um, and it's so funny because I was so messed up and they didn't even think I was going to be that messed up. So they were going to fly out to Texas too, to meet me out there because I was in so much pain. Like it was so bad and they didn't know how I was because I wasn't answering the phone and they weren't even calling me because I was so messed up, but they were speaking with Jake. And then my mom called me one day, I think it was day two post stop and she saw me and she like borderline started crying and then she they were going to go out to Texas to take care of me because they didn't think that I was going to be like as messed up as it was because my own took care of me when I got my boobs done. But my boobs was like one percent of what I went through for my body. So they were not prepared for it either. Like nobody was prepared for it. Like nobody knew it was going to be that bad. And, you know, the past it was just so, so bad. I've never felt that like passing out feeling before. And that was the worst thing in the world. You lose complete control of your body. It was a lot. To, I don't know, I can't even say tell me about it. I want you to tell me of like it was how you so how you bad. managed to do it. It was so bad, but I'm so happy where I am now and I think that like I, I just love my results now. So I think uh like the take of this was like if you were planning on get, uh, getting on if you're planning on getting plastic surgery, definitely watch the video and get more informed about this. Talk to your surgeons and stuff and if you're like unsure of your results directly after your surgery, just trust the process because if you do everything correctly, then it will. you're going to get the results that you'd love to get. Yeah, definitely trust the process. Can you run upstairs and get me an envelope that's right here in the corner? Yeah. So we're going to talk about pricing now, about how much I paid for my surgery and everything. And so I'm having him bring my invoice from the surgical center because I don't want to like give you guys fake numbers and stuff. So that way I'm like fully sure of what I'm trying to tell you guys. And then for my post-op massages, I think I have the receipts on my phone. So that I could tell you guys exactly how much I paid for pretty much everything. Let's see. And mind you guys, this is a very pretty penny. Like something out of this world. Okay. In total. All right. So. How much did you pay for your plastic surgery? Five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand okay, dollars. Wait. Okay. So this, this quote was already what I finally paid. Cause when you first, um, like talk to them, they give you like your quote, right. But at the end of everything, this is what it came up to because you kind of have to add your own things. Okay. So it was $19,000 for the lipo 360 and the BBL. Just that. And then, but like, for example, if you're trying to go get like, lipo and just bbl it's still not going to be nineteen thousand because you have to pay for like the anesthesia just that kind of stuff um okay and then i got ab etch which was another three thousand dollars i got chin lipo which was another three thousand dollars mind you this was like an hour before her surgery an hour before her surgery no no no. the day before her surgery your checkup and then he was like would you like this would you like this and then oh yeah no. No, no no remember you were like wait, I want a little tie or whatever. And he was asking if you wanted this stuff. And you're like, okay, I oh, want to get my chin. Let me explain what happened. So when we had got to the surgical center, I basically had asked him if my chin, because I like I had such a huge, like whenever I would vlog, like I had a huge double chin. And I was like, is there any way we can lipo this? And he was like, it's not really fat. So it was loose skin, what it was like basic, which is damn near worse because if it's fat, they can lipo it out. But if it's not fat and it's loose skin, like you got to get a neck lift, babe. There's nothing else, you know? And I was, well, I'm not going to do that. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, so is there anything else we could do for it? He's like, you could do like an external skin tightening, which is basically like a little, um, like little stampy stamp thingies. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's kind of like a micro needling vibe and they stamp little like hot needles and it does like radio frequency or something like that. It's called pixelate pretty much. And, and that was three thousand. No, um, the so he was like, if you do the pixel late on your chin, um, and then I could try to get as much fat out of there as possible. But um, he's like, the that combo will give you what you want. And I was like, okay, perfect. So then I ended up doing the the lipo. I don't know how much he got out of my chin. I'm gonna imagine not not much. Um, and then J plasma was another three thousand dollars. Um, and then the pixel late was fifteen hundred dollars, and then. The facility fee was $1,990. That's insane. Anesthesia fees were $1,800. But for the anesthesia, it says that I got a 100% discount. So maybe like that's not added. 
And then for the facility fees, it says that I got 50% discount. So I don't know if that's like something that he covers. I don't know. Professional yeah. courtesy. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So for their professional courtesy, they take off $2,795. And that's basically the anesthesia fees and half of the facility fees. Um, and then I also got the BBL surgery surgery packet, which was $390, which let me show you what that includes. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly if this was worth it because I don't even I don't even remember what was in this thing. Okay. I don't even remember you getting that, bro. I'm going to assume it's like a massage included. Uh, no. Oh, my God. So the BBL package was two extra compression garments, which means that it's the one that they take you out of surgery with, which that's included into the actual thing. And then they give you another one of the exact same size. And then your six weeks post-op Baja, which I literally never wore because it was just It was huge. too big. It was too big for her to wear at her six weeks. It was, she was at. huge. But not even just that. Even if I would have worn it, like, it's too... um. How do I explain it? It's too uncomfortable once you alter it. So I was like, I'm not even going to. Uh, BBL pillow, was, they put a front ab board, back board, female, female urinal, which that little thing, it was tough it was to really, use. It was really small. It, it was, was like a urinal, yeah. Um, absorbent maxi pads, we use those. The antibacterial wet wipes, we also use those. Okay, so basically it's saying that the retail price for that is $530. Now, if I could go back... I don't know if I would buy this. Well, you didn't use your six week one to begin with, which is $165. So you would I have, didn't even use the second one they gave you. You didn't use the second one. So that, so would that have been, was a huge like, you know, and then the BBL pillow, I bought one off of Amazon. That was like, I think it was like, oh, I don't remember, but I think it was like 50 bucks and it had the backboard and then the, the bottom. And it was and also, was, it was also a lot skinnier. So it was easier for you to easier, take around yeah. and travel with. Yeah, you're right. And then the app board, I did use that a lot. Like the app board was so, so important. Um, the backboard I stopped using within like two weeks because that thing was so annoying and it was like, it was so annoying. I don't know if I would, um, buy it again for three ninety. I mean, I guess they're giving you your BBL pillow, your front board, backboard. It, yeah. I mean, it pretty much adds up to be the same thing. So if you want to get it and just for it to be a little more convenient, so you don't have to go like fetch all those things afterwards. Cause fetching everything is a nightmare. It's the worst thing in the entire world. Oh, fetching the prescriptions was the worst thing in the entire world. That was the worst thing in the entire oh world. Oh my God. Well, if you if you go to like uh, CVS and stuff like regularly to get prescriptions, you know how the lines are and you know how we didn't know bad where it we is. were going. But dude. I haven't gone in so many years and I forgot how bad it was to get prescriptions. Let me tell you why it was bad. It's because we were in an area where like the people that were working had so many orders and. I don't know what was taking so long, but they were extremely behind. Yeah, they were extremely behind. So there's people waiting there for hours and stuff. So they were upset. So yeah. them being upset, yelling at the people, it's not going to help them get the orders no. caught up fast now enough. Now they were, now, you know, the, they're stressed and it was a whole, dude, they were just fighting in front of us. I was like, oh my gosh, this was, it was really, really bad. Um, anyway, so the entire surgery was $30,000, 885 but that's just the surgery, right? That's not even That's including, not flights. That's not transportation. That's not That's not medication. Massage. You have to include medication onto there, which if you download um the Good RX, I believe that's the app, I got so many discounts. Download the Good RX, 100%. Like it'll save you a coin, bro. So many discounts. I think my meds were probably like under 200 bucks. I don't remember the exact amount, but some something around there. Um and then you're going to probably have to buy diapers, which I... I recommend you buy the diapers. Buy. We had to buy diapers. We had to buy puppy pads, which you need. You literally need the puppy pads. We had to, Just so many other things that obviously aren't part of the BBL package that you have to buy. You have to purchase good food. That's very food, expensive. Yeah, food I recommend you make is a lot of smoothies and a lot of uh, protein. So like protein and carbs, like perfect. Like no, nothing crazy. You don't, need to, you don't need to make... We didn't even need to make chicken noodle soup. Yeah. Because the chicken noodle soup was bland. She didn't really like it anyways because she's not uh, supposed to have, like, a large salt intake. So That was to, hard. We had to have, like, very minimal salt in everything. We use, like, other stuff to substitute as salt. But, yeah, I think smoothies, like salmon and stuff, you can use a little bit of honey and, st uh, and what, like, unsalted butter. But proteins and smoothies, 100%, you guys should uh, use those and eat that stuff for your post-op foods. Yeah, lots of avocados. I was eating avocado, like, every single day. Avocado. Nuts, like, that kind of stuff. I was cooking everything in avocado oil. Really stay away from the salt. I'm pretty much back to eating salt fully now, I would say. I still watch it here and yeah, there. Yeah, we watch but, it way more. Um, 
pretty much gone all like literally all of my coffees now are like a quarter sweet and because i make my own coffee at home now i'm actually able to tweak the sweetness myself which is a lot better because when you go to cafes and you say like half sweet sometimes they're still too sweet you don't know how many milligrams of, it's just so much so if you make your own coffee it will save you a, a lot of money and B, you can actually watch what you're eating and, and doing. So I make my own coffee. So I stopped kind of, you know, stopped on the sugar. I stopped completely on the salt, but I'm pretty much fully, I would say 90% back to eating salt because I'm almost going to be three months. So I'm pretty much towards the finish line. Um, my belly looks so, so good, but it was not because of luck or it was not because, you know, yes, it was my surgeon. He's amazing, but it was because of the way that I, you know, executed the post-op. I literally flew back to Texas the moment I realized I was not getting good results here. I literally flew back. I stayed out there for a week, a week and a day. And I literally got double massages every single day while if, I was out there. Yeah, if, I feel like if you're lazy with it, you're not going to get the results mm -hmm. you want. And it's going to like, it's going to go to how it looked before. It's not, like it's your No, it's, it's going to be worse. No, it's going to be worse. Let me tell you why it's going to be worse. Because why? you're going to have scar tissue. Oh and my And scar gosh. tissue is hard as a rock. So now it has a little bit of scar tissue on the bottom of seroma. her stomach. Yeah, from her seroma. And it's not like it bulges out to where you can see it, but it's hard. If you if you go down it, it's really, really hard. So it's like... Yeah, that's the one area. And then, and then she also oh, has right a little here. bit of scar tissue right here. Where is it? Right here. Yeah, she has scar tissue right here. So it's a little hard there, but it doesn't bulge out. It's just like... If you know it, then if you know you have it, then you have it. Yeah, like I could have totally fixed the seroma. I did it. Now I'm living with those consequences. So you need to make sure that you have the money for the post-op way before you even go into surgery. If somebody tells you your surgery is going to be $25,000, you better have at least 35. 35. Mm -hmm. At least 35 because you're going to need it. My massages, when I had gone to um, the place innovative out in texas i don't remember the exact amount i couldn't find the receipt but it was somewhere in the twos or sorry like 200 maybe i think it was two, 200 because I, I bought a package i got like five massages and then i had to buy another package afterward because it wasn't enough and it was like this whole thing but yeah it, you need to you need to make sure that you have enough money and you need to have the energy to follow you know follow up because if you can't put away the chips if you cannot put away you know the salty food if you can't put away the processed food you're not going to get the results you want and once you w miss that window you're gonna have to pay so much money to fix it and you do not want to go through that i trust me they were hitting me with this stupid little vacuum machine that actually sucked the life out of me you don't want to go through that you want to make sure you do it right since the beginning make sure that you get your massages done every single day till you have no fluid in you and you're, if your massages aren't torturing you then i i guarantee you it's not working it wrong. Uh -huh. yeah you're doing it wrong because that's another thing i noticed like when i was being beat to death literally it i was getting the most amazing results i was screaming and crying but i was getting the best results ever so you need to make sure that you have the energy in you to follow up with the post-op you need to have the energy for it and it sucks but you're going to have to go through with this and you're going to have to really push through and the not sitting in your butt, sleeping in your butt. I don't know what the reality that is. I had some girl tell me at four weeks, you can sit. I had another girl tell me don't sit till four months. I have a, my surgeon tell me at six weeks. So it literally, you make your educated decision on when you want to sit. I started sitting at eight weeks. I sat a little bit at six when I, we were out in Vermont and I did the zip line and stuff. But whenever it's unnecessary, she doesn't do it. Yeah, like right now I'm podcasting on my BBL pillow. Um, when I drive yesterday, I was going for a pretty far drive. So I decided to not use the BBL pillow because it's a little dangerous to drive with it. So I was like, I'm just not going to because it's a little far. But if I, you know, I, I'm still sleeping on my face. That's another thing. Like I still sleep on my face. I wish I would have put a little bit more in my hips, less in my butt, because I do think my butt's a little too big and it scares me. But I also think it's gonna keep going down. It's gonna, it's gonna stop, not not drop, but like it's gonna get tight. Uh, what is it? Normal. It's gonna like drop a little bit. I guess. Stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm still. I literally love my body so much. He slayed the day. Like he left me looking so snatched. I love it. My butt. Maybe it's because I'm not used to having a big butt. But like the attention you get from having a big butt is so nasty and it's so gross and you realize how shitty this world is. Okay. So, so story time or no? About that creepy old guy. You have a nice figure, dude. Dude, that's disgusting. Don't ever say that again. I'm so serious. Like, that guy was 60 years old and at a Target is crazy. Ooh, 